Hello, this is Maria from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at sequences of transformations. We've already looked at translations, reflections, and rotations, and we know that those are congruent transformations. They preserve the congruence of a figure. And if we combine them, we make a sequence of them, then also the figure will be congruent to the original. And that is because each individual transformation preserves congruence. So a sequence of them does also. Makes sense, right? Now, let's look at this example. What if I have this figure and I want to prove that it is congruent to this other? Then all I need to do is find a sequence of transformations that maps my original figure to the final one. What would you say? What kind of sequence of transformations would map this one onto the other? There's actually several possibilities, but fundamentally, we're looking at rotations, translations, and reflections. Translation alone won't do it. Reflection, at least in a horizontal line, won't do it, nor in a vertical line. This one does use a rotation, but you have your choice of the rotation center point. It does not always have to be the origin, though it could be. I could rotate this around the origin, and then translate it. But let me do it differently. I will rotate it around this point. This is one of the vertices of the figure. Here we go. Now it has been rotated 19 degrees around one of its own vertices. And then we can see that the translation will work four units to the right and four units up. Here's four units to the right and then four units up. I'm going to show you another way to do this, and that is where we are going to get done in a single rotation to map the figure to the other. And this is how it goes. I will move the rotation point to negative 2, 3. And now what happens when I rotate it? Ta-da! It maps perfectly over the other. Next, our task is to prove that triangle 1 is congruent to triangle 2. How would you do it? You can pause the video at this point and think about it. We're going to use congruent transformations to do that. And again, translation is not enough. What about a reflection? If we flip it over there, no, it's not going to work. If we flip it this way, no, it's going to look similar to itself. So once again, we would have to rotate. Once again, the rotation could happen around many different points, and it'll still work. If I choose this one and rotate it 90 degrees, so that was 90 degrees counterclockwise around that vertex, around point 0.31, then after that, I only need to translate it, and I need to specify how much I translate it for my proof to be complete. This one will get translated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units down and one to the left. Six down, one to the left. So that then completes the proof showing that the two figures are congruent. All right, our last exercise for this lesson. We have a triangle that has been transformed. There's been a sequence of two transformations and we know the coordinates of its vertices. Now we need to track back what were the coordinates of the vertices of the original triangle. So this triangle was first reflected in the x-axis and then rotated around the origin clockwise, 90 degrees. And its vertices are now here, these three points. And what were the coordinates of its vertices before these transformations? We're going to actually calculate these coordinates and not just use the grid. We're going to verify the answer using the grid. But I want to show you how to do the calculations, okay? because maybe you don't have a grid available in every question. But it does help to think that, okay, it was first reflected, then rotated. So when we go backwards, we first rotate counterclockwise. It goes somewhere there. Then there was a reflection in the x-axis. So we do that backwards. It goes somewhere here. It ends up here in the third quadrant. The first movement we do is go from here to here, a rotation. And uh, if you remember, the coordinates in a 90 degree rotation around the origin, they flip. So this 3 and 5 becomes 5 and 3, but we need to look at the signs. Does any one of them become negative? It will go in this quadrant, 
So 5, 3, the x coordinates are going to be negative, so it's negative 5, 3. Then this 5, 2, it also flips to 2 and 5, but the x coordinates are negative, so negative 2 and 5. And then the last one, the same thing, 0, 1. And now, reflection. It's somewhere here. It is reflected over there. So in this kind of reflection, say for example this point here, if it's reflected here, its x coordinate does not change. But its y coordinate becomes the opposite. For example, negative 4, 1 becomes negative 4, negative 1. So we just copy these. x coordinates are not changing, but the y coordinates become negative. And lastly, we have 0, negative 1. Okay, now let's check our work. After the rotation, the triangle would have been here. We have negative 5, 3, 0, 1, and then negative 2, 5. All is correct. And the original triangle over here, we have negative 5, negative 3, negative 2, negative 5, and then 0, negative 1. So yes, everything is correct. And we're all done with this one, and I hope it was helpful.